Welcome back to the course Learn Blockchain. Today we will be talking about the DAO attack. The DAO was one of the first decentralized autonomous organization created by the founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin himself and some other people in 2016 on Ethereum. The idea behind this was to create a venture capital fund where it will help in the development of decentralized application to run on the Ethereum blockchain. The DAO was stateless, it does not belong to any country. The DAO was crowdfunded through a token sale and by May of 2016, when crowdfunding was over, they raised around $150 million. The people believed in it but unfortunately there was an error in the code of the DAO. The error in the code, in a way the smart contract were coded for the autonomous organization. We discussed earlier that decentralized autonomous organizations are governed completely by the smart contract rather than by the people. Therefore, the DAO was attacked and hacked on June 2016 for $50 million. Interesting note here, the attacker did not do anything illegal. They just found this flaw in the code and they used it to list money out of the DAO account into their own account and so everybody saw this happening. Everybody saw the money moving like just being leased from one account to another account and nobody could do anything of it as the DAO is autonomous, you can just tell it what to do, it does things on its own, governed by its own code and program. At the same time, there is this flaw in the contract which allows the attacker to perform this as a valid transaction and according to the contract, nothing illegal happened. And you know contract is immutable, you cannot change the contract because it is on the blockchain, you can just go and change things around otherwise it will defeat the purpose of the blockchain. So that was a major problem, however the good news was, according to the way DAO was created, there was a fail safe mechanism which means funds cannot be taken out entirely like even if the attacker moves the fund to his account. So they could move to their own account like completely taken away but they have to wait 30 days. So in this time period, the whole community has to think and decide what to do. And there was a dilemma. Is code a law? Code is a law or not? One part of the community says, we won't do anything about it because the code is law, that's how the contracts were coded and we cannot just go and change things that are supposed to be immutable. Whereas other part of the community says, no it's too much money. 50 million dollars belongs to people, so we are going to do a hard fork. We will talk about fork in the next video. So they want to do a hard fork of the blockchain. They will change the rule and revert the rules so they can pull the money back to the owner. So there was this dilemma and eventually they ended up doing a hard fork. It was Vitalik's initiative to do a fork and they did the hard fork. Hard fork does not always imply that there is going to be a split but in this case there was a split. Since some people were really not happy with this decision. Not because they want to protect the attacker but because they want to preserve integrity of this concept of the blockchain. It's a contract for a reason, you cannot just go and revert things. And that hard fork split Ethereum into Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. In Ethereum version, the hacker's money went back to the DAO and distributed back to the people. Whereas in Ethereum Classic version, the hacker's money stays with them. It's like two parallel worlds after the hard fork. That $50 million get duplicated among the two versions. In Ethereum version, money gets returned to the owner, whereas in Ethereum Classic version, the money goes to the hacker. I know this sounds insane. How can we make duplicates of $50 million? But that's how it works. We will discuss this more in the next video. So in the end, the hacker walk away with around $67 million in Ethereum Classic. $67 million because it was calculated later after the exchange and price up down. And so important thing to note here is that the problem was in the DAO code, not in the Ethereum itself problem with how smart contracts were coded, not the Ethereum platform. So this was a short overview of the DAO attack. Some of the parts are still confusing, don't worry we will discuss in the next video. For now if you want to know more detail about the DAO attack, I will suggest you this article story from the Bloomberg. It is well written, I will provide the link in the description. And I hope that you are excited to learn about hard fork and soft fork. And on this note, I will see you in the next video.